Next part of the examination is done uh, supine when the patient is lying down and it allows us to inspect again lying down but also allows us now to palpate all of the anatomic landmarks around the knee. We'll palpate along the quadriceps tendon, its insertion onto the patella, the patella itself, the distal pole of the patella, which actually we can actually maximize by pushing down and having the patella tilt up and pushing at the very distal part, which would actually be sensitive if they had jumper's knee or tendonitis of the patellar tendon, the patellar tendon, or the tibial tubercle at the insertion of the patellar tendon, which would be positive if somebody had Osgood Slaughter's disease. We can also evaluate uh, stability of the patella by moving it from side to side, but reaching underneath to evaluate for uh, arthritis or degenerative changes on the medial facet or lateral facet of the patella. Next, we'd actually be able to palpate anteriorly along the medial border of the patella, the medial patellofemoral ligament or medial plica, which is a small band of tissue that runs from the mid part of the patella to the medial epicondyle. And if you pull backwards and forwards, you'll actually feel a worm-like structure, and if that's symptomatic, that can be a, a source of their pain. The hamstring tendons begin from medially and insert about three finger breadths below the, joint, the medial joint line onto the medial aspect of the tibia. This pes anserine insert insertion can uh, be a source of pain uh, and bursitis. On the lateral side of the knee, the iliotibial band inserts onto a bump called Gerdes tubercle and can also cause pain in that area. More commonly, the iliotibial band at the knee will hurt directly over the lateral epicondyle. If we can have our patient lay sideways, here we can get a, a visualization along the entire I, IT band. The IT band's coming down to Gertie's tubercle. If I put my thumb directly over the lateral epicondyle, oftentimes that's not painful. But when I bring the leg into extension, the IT band falls from posteriorly to anteriorly underneath my thumb and exacerbates the pain of IT band syndrome at the knee. Another way to evaluate for a tight IT band is to do what we call an Ober's test. And what we'll do is we'll bring her hip into full extension, and then as she's in full extension, start to drop the knee down. If she's particularly tight in her iliotibial band, the knee will not come down to the table or will not come down below the level of the opposite knee, indicating a tight IT band, which places her at risk of iliotibial band syndrome. Spin back. Particularly in younger patients, and pedi pediatric patients with open growth plates, you'll want to be able to palpate over the distal femoral physis, which is actually about two to three centimeters above the level of the joint line, uh, or for the tibial physis, which is about two centimeters below the joint line. We want to make sure in kids that they did not have a growth plate injury. Palpating along the joint line itself, uh, it may be indicative of arthritis or of uh, meniscus types of injuries.